Hello and welcome to Nikon Report, your weekly round of all the latest Nikon news and all other photographic announcements that we found interesting. It's Constantine here. And this is Becky. No more takes, straight to the rumors. Well, hello, Internet. So me and Becky recorded the podcast last night. And obviously this morning, Nikon released a firmware 2.0 for Nikon ZA camera. It's awful to release the podcast and being out today straight away. So what I decided is I'm just going to re record this quick roundup of the firmware so you can just read it up, watch Rich's video after this, which will explain a lot more and better than me. But they released firmware version 2.0. So it's been rumored since November last year. And I know a lot of you, especially in recent weeks, we're asking us, when is the new firmware going to come out? So here it is. It is available for download right now. Main features are bird autofocus. So obviously, Bird of Fox did exist in automatic settings, so it had a bird recognition there, but now you actually have a proper setting that you can choose in your autofocus setting, and that should perform better than it performed before. So it's basically on the same as Z9 level. But also in the small change in the firmware, they say that they made other improvements to the autofocus operation and its reliability. So there's a lot of little things that obviously we need to test and find out, but technically the whole autofocus of the camera should be improved. They also specifically talk about 3D tracking accuracy for small fast moving subjects when auto people, vehicles or birds are detected. So that's been improved as well and also autofocus lock-on with flicker detection enable as well. So those are autofocus improvements that are there. Do test it out, do let us know how you feel about this. Obviously the firmware is quite big, so make sure that you allow enough time to update your camera. Now, they also released auto capture, which was available on Nikon Z9 and now is available on Z8 for stills and video, which is really, really good. Also added pixel shift, which was available on Nikon ZF and brought it here. As Richie mentioned in his video that he was quite surprised that it came to Nikon Z8. And the reason for that being is in our conversation in the past is Nikon ZF has redesigned vibration reduction on the sensor. So the way the sensor moves on the camera is different. So it was quite a challenge to bring it to the camera like Nikon Z8. And I assume now that the breakthrough have been achieved, they can bring it to other cameras as well, like Nikon Z9, etc. So with 45 megapixel sensor, you can now get 32 shots, which will produce up to 180 megapixel images, which is huge. So for some of you landscape photographers, product photographers, studio photographers that shoot the non-moving subjects effectively, you'll enjoy this. And the settings are very similar to Nikon Z8. So you can have a look at this. It's fairly straightforward. With. They also added new picture control. So we got deep tone monochrome that came from Nikon ZF as well as rich tone portrait. So have a look at that, quite interesting as well. One of the things that was available on all the Nikon cameras, but for some reason was taken out of Nikon Z8 is exposure delay mode. So it is back now, really excited. I think it's rich as well. Before we used to have set up a timer basically. Now you can stop exposure delay mode, which is much better option in my opinion. And you can also now zoom in up to 400% onto your images. So for you pixel peepers, you'll enjoy that enormously. This is also available for video, which is quite interesting as well. Speaking of video, we now have low ISO for analog footage. So keep in mind, if you recorded analog on those cameras, your base ISO is 800. So if you're shooting on bright sunny day and you want to use shallow depth field, then effectively you would have to use ND filters. Now with those settings enabled, you can go two stops down. So effectively low two setting will give you 200 ISO and you can go on a small increments as well. So that is quite useful. And they also added slow motion recording as well. Those are kind of the main features. Little things they've added like a focus point border and that you can now make it a little bit thicker than usual. They added cycle auto focus area where you can basically assign the auto focus areas the ones you want to cycle through first and then assign them to let's say function button and then by press of a button you'll switch let's say from your single focusing point to full area or and everything in between. In non-CPU lens data you can now add a name of the lens. Again not a big deal but it just makes our life as photographers a bit easier. The last thing I'm going to mention is the shutter sound. So we now have four new shot sounds. Unfortunately, you can't upload the files yet. You can't have bark or meow sounds yet, but I think that's probably gonna come in soon. With this firmware change, I think they enabled it, but let's listen to them. So what do we have here? So this is our normal sound. This is new. Sound number four. And my favorite of them all is the last one. 
So here you have it, folks. The link is available in the description below. If you use any Nikon software and you will need to use Nikon software, for example, for pixel shift functionality or for picture control settings, you will need to update them as well. So I assume that the updates have been released already and you can download them there. Also keep in mind that with edit new features and custom settings menus, some custom settings have been renumbered. So maybe some of the settings that you know the number of, so let's say C1 or D1 setting, may have moved to D2 or D3 settings. So keep that in mind. You may spend a bit more time and you may need to add different shortcuts to my list. Here you have it, folks. Download is available online and back to the show. You know what? Not actually many Z6 Mark III rumors this week. Apparently, one of the rumors was that it showed up on Google search on Google Italy. Can you imagine that? Yeah, it said Nikon Z6 III Acquista online, which basically means to buy online. <laughs> it was sent by a reader, so we don't know if it's legitimate or not. And by reader, we mean a Nikon rumors reader. So to be honest, there's there's no substantiation to this rumor, but we'll report on it anyway. Exactly. Speaking of more rumors, that's probably not true. Apparently, a new camera has been registered. So it's N2216. It was registered in Asia. And it's just after the N2214 that we discussed a few weeks ago has been registered. Can you imagine this? The rumor about two cameras releasing at the same time. However, again, no screenshot, no picture, nothing. Just Nikon rumors and Weibo chat. Weibo is at this Chinese social media website. So here you have it. You know, what do you think, Becky? Hey or nay? It's entirely possible if they've registered another model but as we haven't seen anything behind it we don't know if it's true i do think that nikon will be announcing more than one camera this year at least i hope so hope we're not going to have a repeat of 2022 where we just had the z30 all year so <laughs> hopefully not <laughs> so so i live in hope but obviously these are as i say unsubstantiated rumors and uh, we're all just wishing on a star right now well, I'm telling you, if it's going to be just the Z30, oh, yeah, I'm just about to retire now, really, you know. But <laughs> That's um, right. Thank you, everyone, for watching the show. That's all. Nikon Z6 rumors. You already gave us a click, so that's absolutely splendid. But for the rest of you who want to enjoy the rest of the show, we're going to talk more about everything Nikon, starting with CP+. Plus. So obviously, the announcement of Nikon Z6 III, a lot of people think is going to happen before CP+. Plus which is in Yokohama, Japan, between 22nd and 25th of February. Now, Nikon published a rendering of their booth at Yokohama, so that's number one, but also the list of speakers and list of products they want to focus on. So if you look at that picture, we have ZF, ZFC, and Z8. But who knows? Again, obviously, they're not going to put Z6 Mark III there on the picture because it hasn't been announced yet, but... It seems like it could be another CES, which means a bunch of nothing, really. It could be a brand new camera. What do you think, Becky? I think that it's very likely that CP Plus won't have a new announcement in it. I think that they will probably do it as a separate thing. If it is what we think it is, and it's a Z6 III at some point in the first quarter of the new financial year, which basically means after the end of March, I don't think that CP Plus is a candidate for a new announcement. I think that we're just going to be recapping on all of the great stuff that we've had so far this year. Obviously, Z8 and ZF are the two highlights. But I think that we do have an opportunity to see something literally in the very beginning of the new financial year, and it will be its own event if it is a Z6 III. Here you have it, folks. Becky just dropped the bombshell. There's no <laughs> announcement before CP+. Plus. Boom! <laughs> this is my opinion. It's completely based off of nothing but, you know, personal experience of being in this industry for 15 years. <laughs> Becky, you are so controversial, you know, you, it looks I like know. you're just here for a clicks, you know, because I'm just telling you, the internet told me that mm. Z63 is coming out before CP Plus and, you know, and you're just telling me no. I mean, boo, that's all I'm I can sorry. say. I mean, that's yeah. all I can say on the internet. I can be Outrageous. very intellectual, write a long article, or I can just say boo. You, you know? could just say boo. You do you, boo. I mean, whatever. Mo <laughs> moving on. <laughs> whatever internet, Becky just said whatever. Whatever. She like, doesn't care. I, I just, you know, there is a point where rumors just become a bit much, and maybe that is 
not a popular opinion. Maybe we should do another one of your cons unpopular opinion live streams and I'll come on and I'll say, I don't want to hear about rumors. <laughs> I just want to hear when the camera actually comes out. Well, you know, there's two things. First of all, my unpopular opinion, it's too early to do it now. We're going to do it in August when there's still no new camera announced. And then <laughs> There's just mob on the streets with pitchforks, you know, and yeah. uh, fireworks, really, you know. But also, yes. what I think have happened is Becky bought her Nikon ZF, and now she just doesn't care about any cameras coming out. She's just happy with the camera she has. <laughs> That's actually it, it completely possible. I, I have to say the ZF is is good enough for me that at the moment my focus is not on new cameras, but it doesn't mean I don't want something new out there for the rest of the photographers that are waiting. So, no, I'm well, not that selfish. Well, thank you, Becky. We really appreciate it. <laughs> well, on to some news which might be a little bit more interesting than unsubstantiated rumours. A patent application for optical system, assuming that it's a Z20 to 55mm f2 or possibly a 20 to 55 f1.4 to f2.4, is very interesting. That has actually been published. It was published on the 25th of January, and it does contain examples of optical systems that assume that it would be a full frame, short range, wide aperture zoom. Yeah, so it looks like it's going to be big and chunky, obviously F2 or maybe 1.4 to F2. Obviously, with all those things, it's a patent. So if that's going to happen or not, we, we don't know. But uh, what Asobinet, who actually reported the original news, said that actually before we saw the patents, they were quite old. And this one is fairly new one in a very long time. So that's probably the most important news here. And obviously, we don't know if that's like actually going to materialize or not. But if you are wishing for the lens like this, do definitely let us in the comments below. All right, next up, we have the Nikon ZF Photographic Dynamic Range and Other Sensor Measurements released by Photons to Photos. Yes, if you compare it to Nikon Z6 and Z6 Mark II, you literally will see the same graph. So go enjoy that. I really wish they would review very early cameras like Game Boy camera or something like this, you know, because I want to see the dynamic range difference really between the two because now cameras are so good that if you see the graph, they all about the same. Now, obviously, cinematographers' cameras like Ari or Red just released a brilliant camera that I think has like 17 or 18 stops of dynamic range. So I want us to go there and go from our usual, let's say, 11 to 14 stops of dynamic range and go there. Let's see that advancement at some point. That's my wish. But back to photons to photons. Well, for those of you that don't want to compare it with a Game Boy Advance camera, which I don't think it had a camera, so therefore No, Game Boy had the original camera. Game Boy, <laughs> not the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. It um, would print black and white on thermal paper. I do remember that. And I had a Game Boy Mini that didn't do that. But but the original Game Boy, amazing. Anyway, if you want to compare it with actually other cameras, you can go to the photons to photosnet website. We'll include the link in the description box for you. And you can put whatever comparison you'd like if you want to see, let's say, how it fares against your old D750 or something. Yeah, or G7 AC because they're all 24 megapixels, maybe even Z5. So, you know, have a look at this. You're happy to see the same graph, then you definitely will enjoy it very much. Now, third party news for you next. Viltrox have officially released an autofocus 20 millimeter f2.8 full frame lens for the Z mount. So, this is very exciting. An AF lens made by a third party brand. Yes, a lot of you asked us to review Viltrox lenses and. We were telling you that because we don't have any contact with them, so we're not sure if we're ever going to review them. The good news is that if things line up, we may have the 20mm f2.8 for a review at some point in the near future. And that may open a lot of doors for you, Viltrox users, for us to review more Viltrox lenses for you. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. But in the meantime, if you're interested in this lens, apart from the fact that it's small and lightweight and has a whole host of features, it is only priced at $158. So sounds like a bargain. And if you can't wait for us to get our hands on one to do a review, we also have a lens review by Christopher Frost on his YouTube channel who has put one in his hands. This is the Sony version, but you know, the concept is much the same. 
All right. Well, it seems like it's going to be the shortest podcast we ever done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to spend an hour talking full year super numbers, you know, so uh, got to put it somewhere, isn't it? So and since people love the numbers, this one's actually important because they're not financial. They're all about volume that's been shipped to you, photographer, and how many cameras were sold. So SIPA published the full year numbers. So from January 2023 to December 2023. And if you look at the cameras, they've shipped 714.3 billion yens of cameras, and that's 7.72 million units. That's a lot of cameras, I can tell you that. And compared to 2022, the shipment value is actually 4.9% higher, which is basically 5%, but it's low in terms of units, 3.6% lower. So go figure, I guess, as Nikon says, higher margin, lower sales, you never know. If you look actually into mirrorless side of things, that's where you will see the bigger movement. The shipment volume was 4.83 million units, and the, that would amount to 580.4 billion yen. So, so that's increase of 10.9% in terms of shipment amount, and it's also increased by almost 19% in terms of units being shipped to the customers. Becky, tell me all about lenses. So, so I was reading the average unit price of cameras is 482 pounds, which seems quite low to me, but I suppose there are some cameras that are very cheap and then others which are very high, which is kind of intriguing. Yeah, well, that comes from an article of Japanese newspaper called Nihon Kizai Shimbun, and that's th those are the figures for Japan, basically, which is 90,000 yen, so here There you go. go. So on in terms of lenses, the shipment amount was 637 billion yen, which equates to just under 6 million units. Okay, good. I have nothing more to add to this SIPA segment. Thank you for including it, just to keep me on my toes. <laughs> Yay, numbers! <laughs> love it. If you love numbers, if, if you love billions, especially billions of yen, definitely check it out. <laughs> In those graphs and stats, they also show how many units were shipped to which parts of the world as well. So have a look at this at SIPA official website, which is in English, and it's a Japanese website, which is good. And also Nikon Rooms has a good breakdown, so you can have a look at that as well. Now, let's have a bit of discussion. For We Can Read and Watch, we have this video, which is opinion piece by Matt Irvin, who asked the question, the, is it the end of the camera wars? Mm. What do you think, Becky? Have we reached the point where all cameras are so good that there is no war between them anymore? They don't go on the ring. They don't put the gloves on. They just exist. It is very hard to say because there are people who will always have an opinion about which camera brand is better. I was speaking to a photographer literally on the weekend who said he'd bought a ZF recently. He was originally a Canon shooter. And he does weddings as his kind of bread and butter photography. And he said, yeah, the uh, skin tones are way better on Nikon. So I think I'm going to stick with Nikon from here on out until Canon brings something else out that appeals to me. But I just thought it's very interesting that there is still that differentiation when if I look at pictures that people have posted of their own on the Internet, on social media, wherever it is, I couldn't tell you what camera it was taken on if it's a digital image. I mean, th at this point, what, what difference are you looking for? Obviously, you can see the difference if someone is shooting with a film camera versus a digital camera. And again, you can quite often see the difference between, let's say, medium format and 35mm because there is a tangible difference there. But when it comes to full frame digital cameras and even... APS-C versus full frame, when you're looking on a tiny little screen or when you're just viewing it on, on a laptop screen, it, you are hard pushed to see the difference unless you're doing something like fine art photography or heavily cropping or printing massively. So at this point, I think the argument for one brand or another is pretty much over. I can't see why you would argue for it, but you may have a different opinion. Yeah, I do. I do. I do have a bit of a different <laughs> opinion. I, I do think that people enjoy my medium and large format photography on their tiny screens and know exactly what I'm shooting with. Um, <laughs> I'm going to send you an article. I'm going to test you and see if you can tell the difference between the medium format and the 35 mil. <laughs> Another point of this is being that if you don't know what image was taken with, it is highly likely it was taken with iPhone. Just say this because 90% of all the images are taken with iPhone. You know, that's yeah. that's another point. So the, the war is over iPhone 1, really, let's be honest. But yeah. the best brand is still Mamiya because they were so good, they were successful that they went 
out of business. Hear my thoughts on this. You know me, I'm all about peace. Make love, not war. Enjoy your cameras. Use whatever brand you want. All these things that happen on the internet, they don't mean anything. They don't contribute to anything. They just waste your life. Instead of enjoying your life, you type in those comments on the internet. For what reason? Ask yourself and let me know in the comments below. Yes. I went full circle. Have you noticed I, I went full say. circle? I saying don't type in and then asking them for the comment. This is the nature of internet people. <laughs> I was going to say, thank you for coming to Con's TED Talk. <laughs> this is your weekly TED Talk by Con. But yes, please enjoy a very interesting video by Matt Irvin. See the points he makes. Do you agree with him or not? And of course, enjoy the rest of the weekend because that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us this week. Yes, thank you very much for watching and or listening. Please give us a like and a subscribe if you're on YouTube. If you're listening on a podcast platform, give us a follow, a rating, a review, all those juicy things. Share with your friends and family too if they are camera enthusiasts, perhaps. Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify Unlimited, all those words that you don't understand, those are podcast platforms. So you can find us there in audio form. You can also find on all the social medias like Instagram and Becky's. I'm at Rebecca underscore Danese. The shop is at Nikon at Grace. And I'm at Konstantin Kochkin. We will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.